you saw not two weeks ago, Grady had his birthday. Yeah. And we bought him that that twenty dollar little spinny. He had all these nice new toys. We got him, and I got him that little square. You know what he's what the best thing that ever happened to him is. You know what he just what he found. That's the lid, a peel off lid to a fruit cup, and this has been the greatest day of his life. Yeah, Dotty, crumple balls of paper. They have probably 150 different toys. Crumple balls of papers. What's up, man? Look at him. He's so happy. <laughs> you can hear her batting around her precious. And then she she picks it up in her mouth and runs away to hide it because it's her fucking precious. She's our little trap. And God forbid, God forbid you throw away a crumpled up piece of paper. And I'm telling you, you crumple up a piece of paper, this cat will wake up from a dead sleep and be right up in your shit. I'm you stop. throw it away, she will knock over the garbage to get it. I, I'm a, I will stop. I'm stop buying you toys. That's all there is to it. Peggy, they're teething right now. Did you go through teething with Grady? No, I didn't. I don't think I did. They're teething. They still have their baby teeth and their little fangs are coming in. So they're gnawing on everything. Like I've woken up in the middle of the night with Dottie gnawing on my arm and I was worried she might have turned into a zombie. Apparently the best thing in the world to gnaw on is my straw. So I keep a glass of water by the bed at night. I can't tell you how many mornings I've woken up and my straw is either gone or mysteriously flat and chewed on. You ungrateful little bastard. They do have teeth. They just, they, they have baby teeth like people do. And they don't have the big old like up and down fangs. They, they aren't born with those. So those are coming in now and they're gonna get their permanent teeth. And I guess we're gonna find little tiny kitten teeth around the house, that's gonna be weird. You're not getting any more toys. <laughs> You're not get, I'm not spending another dime on a toy for you. Don't care, fruit cup lid. What you got is what you got. Don't care, fruit cup lid. Because I spend money on birthday and toys, and you got a hat. You got a fucking hat, and now all you want to do is play with garbage. Fruit cup lid. It's not even meat. It's not even like a tuna can. It's a fruit cup lid. But it's been the best damn day of his fucking life. Every, all day, every day, just the fucking for couplet. Crumpled pieces of paper. Doesn't matter how big, like if I have a chocolate and the little, the little paper thing, the chocolate comes in, she will take that and run around with it in her mouth. And. All right, well, we, we. Cats are weird, man. Cats are little fucking assholes. No. Yes. My babies are not assholes. They are. Did I scare you? I'm sorry. Come here. You're Come here and say hi to the internet, doodlebug. You're a furry dick. Hi, internet. I don't like being held, so this isn't going to last very long. Before I punch mommy in the face. I gotta go. I'm a strong, independent kitten. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. He's, go, he's still independent. going. This is, this is, this is his, the best thing he has ever found is the fruit cup lid. Little furry asshole. No, my babies are not assholes. My babies are little angels. Anyway. Okay, it is time. Let's get the intro going. He's so happy. The fucking fruit cup lid. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the world wide web, find all sorts of horrible shit, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? I'm sorry, I can't concentrate because crazy. He's so happy. Upstaging little shit. <laughs> and you can hear Dottie just losing her fucking mind with her little balled up piece of paper. She does this and Peggy just stares at her with total contempt. Like, you're playing with garbage, Dottie. I, That's garbage. I gotta make the money, you little shit. It's time for to the news. Okay. He's like, please, if you just stream me, you would make so much more money. We have been gamers for a long, long time, you and I. Back And by gamer, I don't mean Xbox. I mean dice and paper and 
probably longer than some of our fans have been alive. Yeah, most likely. There is a story told in the hallowed, strange, and bizarre halls of D&D history. About a character who, in a campaign, encountered what was described to him as a gazebo. Why is Dan lurking in my corner of my shot? Dan, do you know the gazebo story? You want to pull up a chair? Dan knows the gazebo story. You want to sit on the cat tower? Do I need to crumple up a piece of paper for you? <laughs> Dan knows the gazebo story. He he encountered his gazebo and told the the uh, the dungeon master he was immediately going to attack the gazebo, and the dungeon master asked him why. Why would you attack a gazebo? Because, short story, long story short, here's the punchline: the character, the, the the player, did not actually know what a gazebo was, and was under the the impression that this was a rare that it was the demogorgon. <laughs> yes, some strange and bizarre evil creature, and that has been a long story. If you you put a million monkeys and a million typewriters in a room. Eventually, eventually, one of them's gonna churn out works of fucking Shakespeare. You know what? This is, this is going all over the place. I feel like I'm watching Lost again. Man 37 attacks Gaz Park Gazebo with a samurai sword. <laughs> oh. Okay. I didn't know D and D had a LARP now. That's what happens when the acid kicks in. Warwick, Rhode Island. Rhode Island man is facing charges after police say he attacked a gazebo in a Warwick park with a samurai sword. Providence Journal reports 37-year-old Andrew Rich was arrested Monday. He's charged with vandalism, disorderly conduct, and having a prohibited weapon. Authorities say they initially called the park to report two people sword fighting. Rich was taken into custody after he was found to be striking the post of, of the gazebo with a sword. 40-year-old Jessica Cole was also arrested and charged with disorderly conduct and having a prohibited weapon. Police say she had a police-style baton. It's unclear if Rich and Cole have lawyers who could comment on the charges. So were these, like, the dumb... Highlander Immortals? Are these like the ones that have only made it this far in the gathering because nobody wants anything to do with them? And they kind of feel bad, like... Like, you know, somebody eventually is going to have to take out Andrew. Yeah, but... Killing Andrew, man, that's like kicking a three-legged puppy. Just... He'll probably behead himself eventually. That guy's so dumb. Did he did he think? Like there was the Kurgan? I used my sword to detect good on it. Like it's not maybe good. It's a gazebo. I shoot it with my bow! There's now a gazebo with an arrow sticking out of it. Was it wounded? No, Eric, it's a gazebo! Did you ever, did you watch Twin Peaks? Yes. Do you remember Ted Raimi's part on Twin Peaks? Yes, yes. Where he winds up in a gazebo. <laughs> in a very unfortunate position. And it involved an arrow, weirdly enough. <laughs> the, what the fuck happened here? Um, my um, guess is gonna be drugs. Yeah. Oh, hi, Peggy. You got a toy? Hi. Hi. You got very sharp claws is what you got. What do you want? You hi, actually Nick. came over here, didn't you? Oh, that I'm was high, a I'm high as fuck on catnip right now. Oh, hi. Uh, we're, just, just, we're just surrounded by cats. That's our life now. Is no. your face supposed to be in my soda? Thank you. 
you find yourself out in the middle of a park going to town on a gazebo with a samurai sword, you got problems. Maybe that gazebo called him a bitch. Maybe his wife left him for that gazebo. Well, we uh, we go from one pop culture reference to another, and this one actually pissed me off. That's not that hard to do. <laughs> Funny. You're kind of the Mr. Furious of the internet. Funny. All right. L let me let me put this into perspective for people who are not geeks. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, let's say a rare and old Stratoc Fender Stratocaster guitar, like 1959 Fender Stratocaster, in, in pristine condition. And someone steals that, and in the process of trying to escape, drops it and fucks it up. Oh. Okay. Now, let's take that and add dork. Man carjacks DeLorean, but can't go back to the future. And okay, this writer, Rudy Chinchilla. Rudy Chinchilla. The writer for- You were always gonna wind up writing shitty puns. There was no choice. There was no other choice in life for you. Either that or you were gonna be a male stripper. I, I've got to get the right voice on to start this story off with. Chinchilla is Guy Fieri's pen name. <laughs> Probably. Neither Marty McFly nor Dr. Emmett Brown emerged from the stainless steel of the DeLorean spotted in Santa Monica this weekend after a police pursuit. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What? What? Hey -oh. Uh, a car that looked like the iconic fictional automobile based time travel device that shuttled McFly back to the future drew the attention of onlookers Thursday morning as police pulled over the driver and arrested him for carjacking. Trauma began when Santa Monica police received a call of carjacking, and the carjacker led police on a short chase before crashing the car half a mile away. Oh. Minor There's only like a hundred of those, right? There are very few DeLoreans, yes. Here's my question. Huh. How do you car drag a Del you The gotta... Gull Wings, right! And they take four fucking ever to open and <laughs> close. Like, you could age. Get out of the car, get your money! Close. How do you car jack that car? Right? Like, you could have one of the epic fights from Kill Bill in the time that the yeah. close. How does that happen? Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Okay, okay! <laughs> I just... Really? Here's the other thing. If you're gonna carjack something, the idea is to get away. And yes. one of the things that hinders getting away is being fucking conspicuous. Yeah. Do you really think it would be that hard for police to find out where a speeding DeLorean is? Because yeah, there's not a lot of those. Every nerd in a three mile radius is putting that shit on Instagram. Right, like that's like stealing a van painted up like the mystery machine. Exactly! Every you're, Wait, you're that happened too. That, that happened too. Yeah, Remember? I think so. Yeah, that happened you're, too. You're gonna get caught. Cause it's really conspicuous. And you don't blend. The the motherfucker crashed. You wanna get it. away with some shit? Steal a black fucking Honda Civic. And and fuck you, Rudy Chinchilla. Maybe the driver just wanted to see what happened when he hit 88 miles per hour. But he didn't get a chance to leave any fiery tracks. Uh-huh! Uh-huh! Aha! Maybe he was from the future. Maybe he was coming to warn us. Don't elect the motherfucker. Drunk lighter. Don't or, elect Cheeto Jesus. Don't elect him. Or Donald Trump. Yeah. Or the Denver International Airport. <sighs> I'm I, the thing I'm most pissed about is he wrecked a DeLorean. 
No, they're like an endangered species. Yes. It's like, you know, born of cocaine. Didn't it? Yeah, that was the, that was the reason that that yep. company went under, right? Because the guy who ran it was a total cokehead. Well, no, he wasn't a cokehead. He was selling cocaine to finance the company. Right. We're never oh, gonna, the eighties. We're never gonna get a car made with cocaine ever again. Uh, all right. Moving right along. Think this is one of those. It seems like a good idea until you realize you live in the real world. There's a program in in New York City. Sensing a theme this week. There is. There's a program in New York City uh, by Link NYC that set up 300 stations all around New York City that was free Wi-Fi that you could connect to. Yes. And it had its own tablet there in the booth yes. if you didn't have your own personal device that you could browse the internet on. And this same, you know, in general, it kind of, that was a cool idea. It's like, hey, when you give people access to the internet who might not be able to afford it, they can get jobs, they can talk to people long distance. They, you know, it's a great thing. You can get directions around the city if you need to. Right. Get suggestions for things to do. Absolutely free. It also had- Hail an Uber. Right. And, uh, or other stuff. Or just pounding it. Pounding it. Just yeah. just pounding it. Just I mean to be honest, pounding it. it seems it's coming. Pounding it. Just just pounding it. Like if they'd called us, we could have told them they should have seen this coming. This is <laughs> they would have given us this idea and would have been like, that's great. People are going to use it for porn. You should just be prepared for that. I mean, What's going on here? Thunderdome. You see Peggy hiding behind the curtain there? Yes. Over the past few weeks, there's been an uptick of reports of people using the kiosk to access porn in public, even pleasuring themselves while doing so. Dudes do that on the subway, actually, more than you'd expect. I mean, but be honest, like if someone had pitched this idea to you, what would be the first thing you would say? How are we going to stop them from jerking off? Exactly. Like if they'd consulted somebody like us who are professionals in Horror. the lowest common denominator, in, in human it would have been like, agency. that's a great idea. Put parental controls on it. Yeah, because they're going to jerk off. They're going to be jerking off. That's that's what's... How did... Have the walls of those little booths squeegeed really often. <laughs> I mean, how did they not see this coming? Literally. Because <laughs> everybody else could. Because the booths are open. If you knew... Have you seen Bill de Blasio? The mayor of New York City? Yeah, he's a little strange. He's... Enormous dork. Yeah. He's like a six foot eight dork. So, you know, I can kind of see him not really seeing this coming. I'm kind of, I'm kind of annoyed at these guys. Cause look, gentlemen, and even ladies, ladies, gentlemen, don't tell me you can't jerk off without porn. Okay. Don't tell me you absolutely positively have to have porn available to pleasure yourself. Dude, some people can't even get it up without porn. That's, it's a problem actually. Like the more hardcore feminists want poor porn banned partially because they feel it degrades women, but partially because it's starting to give men unrealistic ideas about sex and real sex doesn't do anything for some men anymore because of porn. It's not like porn when they have sex with a real person. And so it doesn't do anything for them. It's not, I'm not saying it's everybody. It's a small subset of the population, but it is a thing. It, man, it, but then again, some people can't get it up if they don't have a metal rod shoved up their urethra or a yoga ball to puncture. Like, yeah, people are weird. Everybody got their something. 
You, you just, they should have known. They should, should someone should have warned them. Uh, yeah, this is another case where you have to run your ideas by a 14 year old. Yeah, a 14 year old would be like, can I go to the booby site? Yeah. That'd be the first thing they ask. Dude, can I get porn on this? Like every corporate entity in America should have a 14 year old on staff that every they just run one. ideas by. Every single And if one. that 14 year old giggles, bad idea. Well, speaking of, oh, got another bat. Oh, motherfucking, fucking, you, 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 you idiot. Was any of that English? Um, idiot was. This guy, I'm, I'm just going to speak for itself because. What? The, you. What? Thief You're breaks. Doing, kind of doing the thing from SNL, the. The commentary guy who never has any commentary. Thief breaks into Indio YMCA, steals fake cash from toy register. Oh. Police are on the lookout for a brazen thief who broke into a YMCA in Riverside County through a ceiling to steal cash from a register. Trouble is, neither the cash nor the register were real. Security footage captured the man kicking through the ductwork in the ceiling of the YMCA Child Development Center in Indio, California. He then drops the floor to break into a cash register, stealing all the money inside before making a daring escape out the door. It's one problem. Cash register, cash register in question is a child's toy filled with play money that is worth next to nothing. I think I know. It feels wrong to put him in real jail for this. <laughs> no, no, it's still breaking. Tara, it's it's still breaking. Like and he ending. should go in a Lego jail. It's still breaking and entering. Yes. If, if you break into a place, it's extremely petty larceny. If you break into a place and steal something that's worthless, it's still a crime. Yeah. You're not allowed to break into... It's just a really sad crime. Do you think he was sitting around plotting this shit? I'm okay with him being in a Lego jail if the floor is made exclusively of loose Legos. Oh, Dodger. Oh, oh. that's I, awful. I think that's overkill. I think that's a little too harsh. But was he sitting around... I don't think they do that at Gitmo. Was he sitting there doing, like, some Ocean's Eleven shit? Like timing it out, yeah. Like fucking Hudson Hawk singing "Swinging on a Star" to 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 keep time of the fucking uh, heist. The big oh, getaway. Like how far up are you that you don't even know what real money looks? Like? <laughs> oh shit! This must be money. This seems to be the same thing. All of the this was an alien. This was an a he's dude's an alien. Or maybe he was in the DeLorean with the other guy from the future. <laughs> and money looks different in the future. Or they don't even have cash in the future. It's all fucking... I'm, I'm just... We're on a barter system of virtual reality brain cells or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to picture this. this the cops just trying to... How do we write this shit up? Do we have a box for this one? Because I can't find the code for it. Is this the uh... extremely petty larceny? <laughs> we have another. Oh, this story is from your neck of the woods. Oh boy, because my neck of the woods has had a great week so far. Yeah, we had the terrorism. Yeah, the terrorist. All the terrorism. Except really inept, but. I mean, thank goodness. Yeah, thank, go thank goodness you guys got That dude built a hell of a lot of bombs. Like, thank God only one went off and it was put in a really stupid place because he built a fuck ton of bombs. Well, this one comes from New Jersey. And you know what? I can say I, have, I know her pain because I've driven through Jersey before. And I'll tell you, I could tell I was in New Jersey before I, I actually saw that I was in New Jersey. Because of the smell. It's not a lie. 
It's it's everyone goes oh ha ha this no it's no, not a it's, lot it's you you can smell Jersey. So I feel not for the her. part I'm in. I'm in nice suburban Jersey, and it doesn't smell bad here at all. But there are parts of Jersey that yeah. I feel for her. However, this ain't how you deal with it. Tennessee woman drives into oncoming traffic to avoid going to New Jersey. Wow. Amber Johnson, the guy's fine, hit a Port Authority police officer as she drove against traffic. Tennessee woman injured a Port Authority police officer who drove into oncoming traffic to avoid going through the Lincoln Tunnel into New Jersey Sunday night. Amber Johnson, 30, of Clarksville, was driving in Manhattan traffic toward the Lincoln Tunnel. She apparently told Port Authority police officers she did not want to continue westbound in New Jersey. Police told Johnson to continue through the tunnel, but she ignored them and reportedly turned into oncoming traffic. To be fair... I had this happen to me, not with the tunnel, with the George W. Bro G G w B. Years and years ago, before GPS or Google Maps was a thing, mm -hmm. I got really turned around trying to get back to Connecticut and Queens and wound up going over the GWE and wound up in New Jersey with a dead cell phone at like four in the morning. Yeah, but... You and here's the thing, though. They don't charge you a toll to get into New Jersey. They charge you $15 to, to get leave. out. Yes, I remember of that. I remember that. Yes. So I kind of see where she's coming from because that's a motherfucker of a toll to pay because you made a wrong turn. And that happened to me. But, and that was before Easy Pass. So thank God I had the cash on me. But to drive into. But this on is not a solution. Yeah, you don't go into fucking oncoming traffic and hit a fucking Port Authority cop. He's like, they nope, I ain't paying no $15. Fuck y'all. That's. They got enough problems having to worry about the terrorism, okay? You know what costs a lot more than a $15 toll to, out of New Jersey? Defense attorney. Defense attorney. They charge a lot more than $15. Yeah. And you know, yes, you may be provided with an attorney. Not going to be a really good attorney. And. You're going to pay a fine. You're not yeah. getting out of it. You're, you're gonna... It's going to be more than the toll. Probably. And also the lawsuit from the uh, the officer you hit. And, uh... So this was, I guess, what they what they call penny wise, pound foolish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's. And honestly, not all of Jersey is that bad. Well, no. I no, know that not. sounds crazy, but we live in a nice suburban area, and it's not smelly, and it's actually remarkably like Long Island. I'll tell you, most of America isn't too bad when you get away from those places where they stack all the talking monkeys 40 fucking stories high. Nothing good comes of that. Yeah. Nothing good <laughs> comes of building a box all the way up in the sky and filling it full of talking monkeys. Nothing good. Judge Dredd? That, see how the fuck that turned out. <laughs> Nothing good comes of that shit. Nothing. Like, we're kind of in farm country, actually. Well, we, we drive about 20 minutes away from us, and it's a lot of cow farms. Speaking of cows. Oh, my Segway power holds out. I originally wasn't going to use this story because I was having trouble sourcing it, but then I mentioned it on Twitter, and lots of people found sources for it. So... I can say with with some measure of certainty, and we have pictures, this fucking happened. This goddamn incredible fucking thing fucking happened. And here's even more. The, the, the better part is nobody, man nor beast, was injured. That's the truly spectacular part about this story. Everybody walked the fuck away like nothing happened. Helicopter destroyed after crashing into cow. Cow survives. Oh my god, look at that picture. Look at that fucking, fucking helicopter. Look Dan's getting up. He's like, I gotta see this shit. Holy shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is an ex-helicopter. A cow in Queensland, Australia went head-to-head -head with a helicopter and won. 
Local police have said the cow apparently got its horns caught in the bottom of a Robinson R-22 Beta mustering helicopter on the afternoon of 18 September. The incident resulted in the helicopter crashing into a nearby road and bursting into flames and the cow lived to tell the tale. Police reports stated it's believed the rails underneath the helicopter got tangled up in the cow's horns, causing the chopper to lose balance. The pilot, a 35-year-old Richmond man, walked away from the crash without injury. The cow escaped becoming roast beef and lived to roam another day. And no one will ever fuck with that cow again. Jesus Although, Christ. If it had horns, it was a bull, by the way, not a cow. That's true. That's, that's Cows true. are, by definition, female. That I look forward to your comments telling me why that's wrong. <laughs> no one will ever fuck with this particular bovine. <laughs> like, the other bulls in the yard are going to try and start some shit, and they're going to be like, oh, really? You want to fuck with Steve? Because he took out a helicopter. <laughs> Good luck, bro. Good luck. Can you imagine that... He defeated the human machinery. All I'm picturing is there is a moment... When this guy is standing there, and he's looking at the cow, and then the helicopter explodes, and the cow, he and the cow look at the helicopter, they look at each other, they're looking back at the helicopter, and they're like, well, okay then. I like to imagine the cow giving some, like, really cool action movie line, like, where's the beef? Cool cows don't look at explosions. Okay, fair, fair. Fair, yes. Jesus wow. Christ! And everybody walked away fine. That's one of those moments. This is one of those moments where God nudged Jesus and went, "Hey, watch this shit. This is gonna be funny." <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> this is this is uh, or perhaps you know when you were a kid, did you ever just pick up two reaction figures and go like this? <laughs> Yes. That's that's Jesus. <laughs> Picking up the farm toy and the helicopter and just mashing them together. This was a fucking miracle and I want you to acknowledge it. Well, I, I didn't even think about of course. Oh wait, your 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 audio room. dropped. Oh, hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? You got real quiet. Words, words, words. What happened? God damn it. I didn't do anything. I don't all right, talk now. Now, no, hello? You're very, very quiet. I didn't do anything. What the shit? Kittens? No, I don't have kittens. Uh, I blame Dan. He came in here and broke everything. God damn it. I hate that. We were on a roll with the cows. Cows. I mean... Someone said, of course, Tara would point out, would call the cow that took down the helicopter, Steve. I didn't even think about that. I wasn't even thinking about Civil War. <laughs> the Seven's beautiful arms. That was just the first name that came to my head, which probably does make sense. <laughs> I mean, this is, it's, uh, I guess the first thing we learned is miracles happen. Well, you don't fuck with the cow, but miracles, miracles happen sometimes. You know, in the Hindu religion, they worship cows. Cows are considered sacred. Yeah. yeah Maybe they, now we know why. The cow can fucking take out a helicopter. Man, I miss, I wish the Mythbusters were still around so they could test this shit. <laughs> How would they? They would find a fucking they way. They would, they would figure it out. We've learned just because you've made a wrong turn does not mean you have to compound the error. Yeah. Sometimes you have to pay the $15. Sometimes you just have to live with your decisions and wind up in Jersey. I mean, look at me. <laughs> We've learned if you're going to commit a crime, for fuck's sake, at least make sure it's worth it. Yeah, at least do your best to commit a real crime. Because there's no toy jail. There's no toy jail. We've learned if you get if you give a man some Wi-Fi, there's gonna be porn. Yep. That's just it's gonna happen. 
You've got to plan for it. If you lead a man to Wi-Fi, he's going to have to jerk. <laughs> yeah. We've learned... We've learned, do not, don't steal famous fucking cars. Because, no. Steal inconspicuous cars. Yes. Well, no, don't steal cars, but. You, the, the, yes. The minute. I feel don't steal cars. The minute you do this, number one, everyone is going to turn into an eye in the sky for the fucking cops. And number two, you run the risk of destroying a piece of fucking history. Yeah. There are geeks that want to hurt you right now. I am like one Michael of them. Michael J. Fox probably felt that, and you removed a year from his life. I hope you're happy. You have weakened Michael J. Fox's life force. And finally, given enough time, any role-playing story <laughs> will become reality. God, I hope that's not true. Oh, God, no. Do you have flashbacks to LARP and shit? I don't want most of my LARP stories to come true. <laughs> well, I would be able to, I would like it, I, I wouldn't mind being able to make it rain fire on people. That would be cool. Yeah, no, that's not a good idea. It's a great idea. I work retail. 